Right guys, so another event session here today. We're going to have Dan on the phone again, like you said last time. We've now got the event, so now I know what I'm doing. So obviously we've got Britain's first up, 27th of January. Then we've got Arnold's, obviously Arnold's events are out. January, Hannah and March both have axle press, so we're going to start with axle. When Dan came up, he taught me something that this axle, when you're cleaning it, it can move. So a unfixed axle, whatever they're called, is, is so much easier you can get under it. Well, a fixed axle, you have to get un under it more. We load up the weights, we put a clip on, we tie this around it, and this makes it so much more harder and, and makes the axle fixed. Uh, I tried this for the first time last week, and holy crap, the difference is that I didn't put it on to 160, and the 160, I was like, what the heck? I went heavier, but I'm just saying the first, I was like, geez, it just puts you into that mindset of what a fixed axle is going to feel like. So the kind of main priority we have before Christmas is a lot of timing that I have keep going on about. So I'll be doing five reps, the speed I'll be doing at Britain's. Then the second set, I'll be doing five reps, the speed I'll be doing at Arnold's. On the last set, I don't know if it's Arnold's or Britain's yet, but we'll make a decision. So just so I can get mentally used up all the time, because that's one thing like I've talked about in the past. I know if I can make use to my time, that I'm going to be unbeatable. So that's it. But my strength feels good. Mentally, I feel good. Physically, I feel good. So I've only got an hour and a half to train. My fucking valve went in my uh, tyre, so I need to go get that sorted. So let's see what we can do in an hour and a half. Then after Christmas, we get the head down and we work, we work, we work, and also we go hunting. <laughs> Right, we're doing 85, then we're going to put 10s on for the next one. So this is 105. Sorry guys, 105. Cool. That's fine, eh? Yeah, that's good, man. Hey, Tom. I've not really got a setup here. I took the axle through thinking I'd be able to train it easy, but as you can see behind, um, Although Britain's is a raised axle, so we're going to do it like this for this week. Take the gold weights next week, and as you can see, I put the bands over to make this fixed, sexy, and spicy. Am I doing three sets at this weight? Yeah. Uh, do one set, and then we might go up for the Arnold. I'm thinking maybe do like one set of six to eight, and then one set less for the Arnold. I'm going to have a minute timer on, but you lift. Try and get that in your head, that rhythm, because obviously you can't hear me at comps. I'll give you, like, halfway, last 10 seconds and stuff, but you just get that rhythm in. We'll see what the time is when you hit six. So it's two breaths minimum, four breaths maximum. Three, two, one, lift. Four breaths, do one more rep. There we go. How long was that? That's got you. That was perfect, man. That was the best rhythm you've had. Yeah. I was just getting confused, so I was like, three, two, one, go. One more. I was like, hey. that's what I'm kind of trying to do is use every single second I have when I'm doing it. And obviously, like if I didn't talk to Dan, it would have been seven, maybe one more. Obviously, I asked him for a 30 second 
Can't I thought I did six and or seven for it? It's like, geez, that's fast, but you know, some dodgy reps, but again, as I fixed that, so only had the underbelt on, no arm sleeves, but the strength's not the, never the issue, it's just the rhythm. And that's why I say to Dan, I want to do it myself, because if he's just telling me go 30 seconds, 10 seconds, stop, then it's better that way. So, yeah, seven reps at 135 is good, it was uh, nice and easy. 20, 40, 60, 80, 100, 135, yeah, 140, so yeah, it's not bad. If he remembers to do the 30 seconds next time, that would be good. Eh? Good. When I got to my fifth rep, I was like, what? Well, like, that's definitely more than 30 seconds. Uh, toward the other way again, a little bit there, that'll do. I'll time it and I'll try and remember to give you 30 seconds as well. How long am I getting? Like two minutes, I think it is at the Arnold. The most anyone's ever done is four on this. What I'd say is hit four reps, but 10, 15 breaths between each rep, and then we'll see what the time is, and then we can adjust it. Get aggressive with it, Tom. Let's switch it on. Three, two, one, lift. There we go, Tom. Right. That's 40 seconds gone. Aggressive, come on. There we go. Perfect, man. What? That was perfect. That was fucking bang on. See, the Arnold is totally different. It's a shock because the Britain Jew was so fast, and then that's all you get used to with the Arnold is to pace because I used to have to just go do one, four breaths, and do it. So, like, it's a totally, totally different. You see, There's like seven reps in the Britain one in like a minute and I did four reps in like a minute 40 for the Arnold so that's the longest bit done so I'm going to try and see what I can do now and then take it from there but yeah first one done so what do I do now? in all honesty like uh, I wait for height would be good if it was the whole way along, I think. When this comes, you're just, you've got a small target to play for. Whereas when you do every other, when, when I would train it for shot, all I was doing was, me and Luke were just passing it back to each other. I don't really think it matters if there's four or five bags, because if you can chuck like two or three heavy bags back and forth to each other, the light ones are easy. So I might try and fill a bag up to 30 and do like 26, 28, 30, because the first two bags are always going to be the easiest. but. When you're at Britain's, you fire it in a straight line. Right now I'm firing it diagonally, so it's travelling more in the air. Whereas if I was to try just do it straight back each time, it'd be so much easier. So, yeah, it's frustrating, but like last week as well, even though it was fast, I had to make sure every single one went over there. And look at that. For, like, and also, throwing it high in the air as well, I think will be more beneficial because I don't have a target, so I really extend it. And always my target when I'm doing it in the air is trying to hit the roof, so I know that I'm going to clear a bar each time, so if I can do five that hits that I know that is going to be nearly hitting the roof, you're in a good place. That's what I did for Shaw. 
when you're training that mindset of, right, I need to explode each time, when you go to a comp, it's just bang, bang, bang. So, yeah, right, I'm going to do frame holds, right? That was actually easier than I thought. Do you think I should just load the bastard up? Can, can you can you tell me for when it's half like when it's 30 seconds, like yeah. 6:45, just so I kind of know? Because if not, I'll just be standing there like. Yeah, no, there'll be times. Is that it? Yeah. Yeah, that is your ass. Brilliant. Three, two, one, lift. That's ten. Twenty. Breeze, squeeze. Thirty. To be honest, that's the first time training the grip as well, and, like properly, so it's good. Oh, my days, man. They call me the T Rex. See, for art, the stones, do you think I should just bash like 120, 140 just to get movement? I'm just going to go on my own time. Yeah, totally fine, man. Why am I doing it so high, not to the second highest? I just want to get, like, too strong, if that makes sense. Right, I'll try and get under you. Just too good at There we go. You know. That first one was just... Even me, trying to train stones every single week, putting tacky on. If you don't have to, you don't need to, and you can get really injured, so I'm doing... As you can see, the first one wasn't the best, and then obviously I adjusted for the second one, and then the third one will be the best. So that's where well, you know when you're good at, good at setting, you can adjust each set to make it better. Tip with this as well, a lot of people do this in training, right? Train with no tacky is good, but don't train every session with no tacky, because I think a lot of people get, to get in their head, oh, if I train with no tacky, I'm good. But when you train with tacky, it's a totally different game. You don't have to squeeze it as hard. You lift different, basically, when you're doing both, so. Yeah, really, really important to mix it up when you're training. Don't just try and impress everyone in the gym and go, oh, I can load a 160, no tacky. doesn't matter because if you go to a competition and put tacky on and a 160, you think it'll be easier, but like I said, tacky mucks a lot of people up and it's really, really good to get used to tacky. So in the winter right now, I use different grades than I would in the summer. Sheffield Arena's colder and most arenas as well, so it's all about using different tackies. If I don't use any tacky, get to Sheffield Arena, my head will be like, just isn't sticking good. So if I use it before I go, it means I just get better. And also it saves injury. Stuff being injured on stones, eh? There we go. After Christmas time, we'll start doing stone runs. I don't need to do any stone runs till before Christmas. Nice to get back in that, but we'll leave it at three singles at 140 because it's pointless doing anything else. So, Dan, thank you very much. That was good, man. That was nice. No use of that. Whoop watch. Not sponsored by the way anything. But whoop, if you want to throw me some money, by all means. Just track things. Max heart rate, calories, rest and recovery, strain, how I'm sleeping. We did a, another similar one a few weeks ago and it just reported that my my stress was elevated so slightly. So just want to keep a check on that. Today's the first day I'll be 
going back to using elbow sleeves, wrist straps, knee, knee sleeves uh, and the belt. We will be doing, I'll be doing axle clean and press. I'm going up to about 140 kilos today. After that, a strict log and then some other accessories. So that's the plan. One more round the 90. That was 92, 92 calories. I think when I first did it, it was, I think, 67 calories. So if I'm feeling good, try and push on a little bit and beat that. Five minutes of warm-up done. Only another 55 minutes to go. Max heart rate was up to 154. I don't know if that's good or not, but... So I'll go through here, mate. We'll do some bits and pieces here. stuff is just to get my shoulder opened up enough so when I'm doing axle that mobility to press up and over is there so before I wouldn't be able to go up and over and press the wall it'd be there so that's what I'm trying to get up and over in the wall every time that's what I notice with Tom when he's pressing big Tommy um, his mobility shoulder mobility is so good it's just something that I haven't really tried to work on that much over the last couple of years um, since I've tweaked it. Once you hurt yourself or once you get an injury, you know, although it was only a minor injury my shoulder, it's probably your shoulders here, whatever. See, I've, ha I've had an injury here. All the associated bits in the shoulder are compensating so that part doesn't have to work. And it was throwing me, so say when I'm doing a log press, rather than getting up and over, it was here all the time. And that's why I think I was losing um, a lot of reps. So at the Shaw Classic, when I'm pressing it, it was out in front of me, and then I'm going forward. If it's up and over, that's it. Above your, directly above your hips, that's where it's the most strongest. And that's what we need to see every time I'm pressing. So hopefully, oh, it's got a wee message. You hit your target strain. Oh, don't really know what that means, but. This is the last part of the, the warm up before we start the main work. So what we found is, my rotation in this shoulder was just non-existent, so you'll see when I go through it um, why we do it or why I do it. So it's just a nice easy stretch. I want this little twist into my lat, and when I'm breathing in, it's like a full exhale, and I'm trying to breathe in through this part of my my kind of chest, if that makes sense. So, Twist. That's one. One more. See, that's where I can feel a little pinch. I'll just spend a little minute there. And then open it back up. Just going to do a little bit just to. Just helps open up my. This part of my arm. A bit heavier, but this will be fine. This now, just for axle, you're doing over under grip. It's notorious for bicep tendon pain. So, just trying to do a little bit more to prevent that from happening. Just get some bumpers to get it. Okay, new improved um, Reebok Adi Power shoes. Um, no holes in them, so that's nice. Starting off with 100 kilos on the bar for axle. Mm -hmm. 60 kilos, sorry. I'm getting too carried away, so we'll get into it. We'll see how today goes. <laughs> 
So yeah, Axel, so the plan is for me today to work up to around 140 um, for some cleaning, cleaning press. I just keep pushing from there, so that's the plan this week. I think Britain's is between 150 and 160, I think, for reps, I'm not sure. Something like that, anyway, so this will be a good indication of how things are going. Up to 100 kilos now. This is us up to 140 kilos, so this will be the kind of working sets today, doing floor to overhead. Again, just getting back into, into the groove with the assisted lifting, feeling good so far. Just have to keep that going, so we'll see how many reps we can do with this. We'll do that first and then talk about what's, up, what's, what's after then. So, 140. It wasn't hard, but it was just with the belt. Um, it just makes you just not the no ability to breathe. So maybe that's something to look at again. Um, nothing fantastic, but not bad. Back to the sweaty days, man. Well. How do you know you're getting strong? Because I'm sweating profusely. On that, what I did notice um, for me was my my cleans seemed pretty nice, as in they were settling, settling quite high, which is good. I'll have to watch it back, but it felt pretty decent. Just get that breath and just keep that form tight on the on the second part from the from here. To, to kind of rack position. So next up, I'm going to do one four to overhead, and then uh, so get up into the rack position, standing, and then five presses overhead. Oh, strict log press now. Three sets of five, but each set is a, is basically a cluster. So, or each rep's a cluster, or whatever. But basically, with that, so you're doing five reps strict. One rep, rest, or take a twenty-second pause in between the next rep, and so on and so forth. So, um, each set will take just over a minute, basically. Log is 80, so probably around 120 kilos. Not a huge weight, but um, good enough. I might even set that down one more. So I'll just do a couple of sets, a couple of reps, sorry, with this just to get the, the movement okay. And then next um, will be kind of the, the working sets at 120. So this will just be hopefully nice and simple. 
Strict log isn't something I've really done, so I think the thought process is even though we don't have log at the moment, um, doing the strict log is minimal kind of pressure wear and tear on my knees, but it's still getting the, the movement done, it's still getting that strength up. So I'm doing the push press stuff with uh, the axle clean press, obviously, and then. The strength, second strength exercise um, is the strict log, so trying to build that strict, strict log up. So you can see when I'm pressing, I'm leaning back, strict, and then taking the head through. Yeah, we have to make sure our head's kind of through every time. Um, and then, you know, you get the down signal. So if I'm, and this isn't, this isn't attacking anyone, by the way, um, but for me, like, because the referees know how I press, so if I'm pressing like this, that's not a good rep for me. So, I don't want to be too controversial, but with, with how Mitchell presses, Mitchell presses a lot differently from myself. You know, Mitchell does lean back and he gets a lot of strength from there. And to me, I think his lockouts are, are decent. Um, I don't see that much, uh, not that it's my job to say it was a good rep or not, but I thought the, the lifts that Mitchell does are, are decent lifts. Um, but he just presses differently. So again, it goes back to the, the textbook stuff. What is a textbook log press? What is a textbook deadlift? Mitchell's one of those guys that comes into the, the sport and he's changing things up, which is great, which I think is, is good for the sport. Um, and yeah, fair play to him. But for me, the way I press, I couldn't press like Mitchell and Mitchell you know, couldn't press like me. So. We're different athletes, just like Tom, just like Brian, the way he presses, the way Martins, or you know, any of these guys. So for me, I'm just getting those signals in my head. So when I'm when I'm leaning back, I'm looking at the referee, no, no, okay. And then as I take my head through, look at the referee, good left, get down, and then that's it. So it's good. It's something that again is low impact. You know, strict log isn't a huge impact, especially doing it out of the rack. Um, Cushy said to me the other night, she was like, oh, I notice you're not sweating as much. I was like, oh, fuck. Does that mean I'm getting weaker? I don't know. Maybe I've cracked the sweat issue, but then you come in here and press an axle a few times and then you're dying. Um, so yeah, probably not. <coughs> in the day. It's nice sometimes just to come in and just, you have that ability to switch off in here as well, which is nice. I think that's why the gym is so popular over the last little while, isn't it? Like being able to come to a place and just not be worried about anything. All you're worried about is lifting and stuff. I think that's nice. That's what I like about it. You know, I know strong man isn't the be all and end all, but it's certainly changed my life for the better. Tom and I had a chat last week about it, and like Tom, you know, said and very, 
very rightly Tom said, like without the gym, you know, mentally he wouldn't be where he is today and he wouldn't be able to do stuff, he wouldn't, you know, be where he is obviously, he wouldn't be able to have a house, he wouldn't be able to probably speak to people, he wouldn't be able to do anything and and then, you know, that made me think, I was like, well likewise for me I'd still be, you know, working away from home offshore and oil rigs and it's just very nice that we've, you know, as brothers, been able to do something. Yeah, it's pretty cool, isn't it? It's not bad. Not bad for a couple of guys from Invergee. Hey, come on, you bitch. Yeah. That's the, I guess, two kind of strongman movements done, if you want to call them that. Absolutely impressed. And then now I'll go on to paused close grip bench press, um, which is naughty. I find my left arm is considerably weaker than my right. When we're lifting, we want everything to be in unison. You know, it's everything smooth, everything's, there's no weaknesses. And with those pauses, I'm finding that really kind of helps balance that out, which is really nice. Feeling better, feeling fitter. So all these little things um, really start to make sense when when you look into the, the nitty gritty of things, um, which I really enjoy. It's just a, a bit of a longer training session. This. this will be the last warm up and then we'll do try like 140 maybe see. momentum with a bench press you take it off drop it down even in the pause like even you do it powerlifting style you take it off get a down command you're holding it there you can still get some like it's like that elastic band you still get some recoil from that position up there but when you're taking that pause away holding it there four seconds it's it's really tough Obviously for me it is. train for like the more you can make it set in your ways as well so I think that's the same with anything in life like you've been doing it for so long oh well it's just the way I do it but I guess it's been open to to change I don't know everything about anything if that makes sense there's nothing I can say I know everything about I think as soon as you think you're you're that good that you don't need to know anything more. It's like false confidence as well, isn't it? Because 
It's got to be false because nobody in the world can know everything. Anyway, shut up. Hey guys, that is the first session of the week done. So it was pressing for me. Good way to start the week. Um, tomorrow is deadlifts. I want to go eat. Big Tom's way down in New York. Yeah, thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next raw training session. As always, please smile, stay safe, stay spicy, and please don't forget to ring that little bell. Ding -ling -ling.